So, the question asks us to prove, at first, that the probability of x and y given z is equal to the probability of x given z times the probability of y given x and z. For those of you who have studied a more advanced probability theory, may recognize this as a subset of the law of total probability. But that's a discussion for another day. Okay, let's start with a quick definition so we can actually solve this um, proof. Probability of A given B, where A and B could be random variables, events. So in general, probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B the comma is often used for the intersection sign in this um, course, divided by the probability of B. As you can see on the screen, the probability of B can be multiplied through by both sides to rearrange our equation, so we have the probability of A and B on their own. Now, if we let X equal B and Y equal A, we can quickly say that the joint probability of X and Y is equal to the probability of x times the probability of y given x. Now, as you have to do the same thing to both sides of any equation when manipulating it, we can say, why don't we let all probabilities be given with respect to z, i.e. we already know what z is. And that gives us this equation. And voila, we have now proven the original statement itself. However, the question is not yet complete. There is a second part to the question, where it asks us what looks like a more challenging proof. The probability of x given y and z is equal to this mouthful, the probability of y given x and z times the probability of x given z, all over the probability of y given z. Okay, so to tackle this, I will personally start on the left-hand side and use the rule we have already defined and that was the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B, as mentioned earlier. In this case, we will say, why don't we just pretend Z is always given and let X equal A and Y equal B? So, we can now say probability of X given Y and Z is equal to the probability of X and Y, that was the intersection, over the probability of y given z. So the given z is assumed on both sides constantly. Now, the more perceptive ones of you may notice that the numerator we have already seen before, and that was in the first part of the question. Here and here. So we can quickly take the result we have already proven and push that into our numerator. And voila, we have also proven the second part of the question. And that is that.